Holy moly, you and I, the last six months of 2020, have lived through some of the craziest time in long-term recent memory. Let me show you something. I read an article here in the Wall Street Journal called The Six Months That Shift the World. Didn't shock your world, it shocked mine. Some good, some bad, some very ugly. Uh, the last time you and I had been through a pandemic was 1918. You and I haven't gone through a pandemic. This is the first time we've done it, but the last time a pandemic hit our country to this magnitude was 1918. Over 500 million people all over the world, one third of the world's population, being came infected with the flu, an H1N1 type of virus. And you and I have lived through a lot of social unrest, you know, the whole Black Lives Matter, the whole All Lives Matter debate, all this crazy uh, madness with, with what's going on. This is the most amount of social unrest since the civil rights movement in the 1950s and 1960s, where so many things are going on in our country. And everybody right now is looking for change. Everybody right now is looking for systemic, demanding systemic change, looking for things to be rooted out, a problem. We have an election coming up. Goodness gracious, we've got a lot of things going on right now in the first six months of 2020. Listen, if, you, if anything did you learn about 2020 and you're still here and you're still around and you're still alive be grateful be thankful there's so many things to learn so I'm in this video I'm going to share with you the five lessons I've personally learned in my personal life in my business life money and in the future so number one what I learned here in the last six months of 2020 is adapt or die not literally I'm talking about your business I'm, I'm talking about your finances dying either adapt or die you know we shifted completely into a virtual world. If you weren't embracing technology, if you weren't already using technology, you better have learned how to use it very quickly. Otherwise, the world is passing you up. One of the greatest benefits of right now is going on is people are now accustomed to using Zoom. People are accustomed to using FaceTime. People are accustomed to using technology. People are respecting the fact that, man, I, I don't want to invade any personal space, that whole social distancing type of thing. In a way, that's kind of a good thing. Why? Because it's causing people to change. It's causing people to adapt. It's making making sure people are growing because if you ain't growing you're going to be regressing so when I'm looking at business I'm looking at so many different uh, aspects I was I, actually I was looking at this uh, car wrapping company right so you know what business is down right now let me get my car wrap let me put some uh, business logos and uh, use it for business use and one of the car wrapping services here to, to wrap my car in, in different color or put some business information on it they said you know we're shutting down to the COVID no problem and then this person says, stop calling me because now that you got time to call me to do your project, I don't want to be bothered. The only people I'm doing work for are first responders and this and this and that. I said, man, what an ungrateful entrepreneur. What an ungrateful person. Matter of fact, you should be thanking people that they're reaching out to you. Say, you know what? Based on safety concerns, let me get back to you after we figure out what's going on with this coronavirus. Instead of putting a blast out there saying, stay away from me and, and basically telling your customers or potential customers oh now you got time of course not people's got time my barber my barbers some of them said listen your shop is closed can you do house calls I said well Matt I I'm not sure right now no problem but after things got you know what things kind of settling down and people kind of felt a little bit more comfortable with the COVID and the pandemic uh, crisis so okay let me do some house calls let me do some, do some masks let me put some gloves on let's start cutting some hair no problem they're starting to make house calls even though their barber shops are open appreciate them for doing that I need my car wash a lot of the car washes were closed Right, so we hired somebody to come to the house and wash cars. These are the type of things we're talking about in terms of adapting and growing or adapting and dying in business, dying financially speaking. Restaurants, curbside pickup, people are worried about this. People are worried that they cannot get their product or get their service out to the customer. That's called a lack of distribution. Because most businesses, they only operate in the retail space. In, in this world right now that we're living in, this virtual pandemic type of world, this social distancing type of world, right? People want to get that product delivered somehow, some way. So if you have a business, you have to physically deliver it. Distribution was a problem. Getting a physical product, like food, it was, it was a problem. What I didn't like is that people were deemed essential and non-essential. We'll get back to that, to that in a second. But many people today had to realize if either you adapt or you die, adapt and grow or you adapt and get left behind. Second lesson I learned in terms of our business is tough decisions are never easy. One of the things that a lot of people realize is, man, I spend a lot of money on some shit. I need to cut some losses. I need to spend time with my family. I need to spend time with my wife. I need to spend time with people I love and care about and actually get to know them. Oftentimes, when in, in most, uh, in most uh, uh, folks' life, husband goes to work, wife goes to work, and for eight, nine, 10 hours, they're apart. They gotta, they gotta communicate via text, they gotta communicate via phone calls. If they're raising a family, they gotta find out who's gonna pick up the kids, drop off the kids. Maybe there's a nanny in the mix, maybe there's a babysitter in the mix, maybe there's parents in the mix that help all that. And then they get together around five, six, seven o'clock at night. They get back together, have dinner, whatever activities, and go to bed. So physically speaking, they're only spending about the average before the pandemic, about maybe two, three, four hours a day to get to know each other. Now, 
based on a pandemic, guess what? We got all day to get to know each other. And then people were getting on each other's nerves. And so what I realized during this pandemic, thank God we were able to get to know the people we love and care about. Thank God we got to know our family. Thank God we got to really have time to spend time while the world was put on pause. You got to know your family. You got to know your friends. You got to know the people that really were gonna be in your corner or not based on tough times. I never learned about a person in my relationship with them, not during good times. I never learned about it. anybody could be good with you during the good times. Hey, this, hey, that, my mom had fun here, having fun there, no problem. You get to learn a lot about people in the bad times. Their character gets exposed in tough times. There's a saying out there, tough times create strong leaders. Strong leaders create good times. Good times create weak leaders. Weak leaders create tough times. I'll get back to that in a second in terms of wartime leadership here in a second, but that's what got exposed. You got to get exposed that you got to make some tough decisions and say, you know what? If I love you, I decide to marry you. I decide to be your mom, your dad, your parent. I got to get to know you. And so, you know, I, I, I'm looking at this time like I'm grateful that in the midst of all this, we can stay safe. We can stay healthy. We can stay, you know, in, in a position where we can grow through this. You know, people are like you know, all on, on top of each other. I get it. But at the same time, you know, sometimes you really realize that about family. We can't, sometimes we can't stand each other, but we got to find somehow, some way to get along. A lot of people realize how much money they wasted on entertainment. A lot of people realize how much they waste on unnecessary shopping. I'm so glad that you realize how much you spend money on stuff that just doesn't matter. But sometimes for a lot of people, that's tough because sometimes shopping or buying whatever it can, can be therapeutic and go to the mall can be therapeutic. I get it. But tough times right here, tough decisions are never easy. We kind of had to reset. We kind of had to figure out what are our values? What are our principles? What do we stand for? Did you ask yourself those type of questions? Who am I about? Where do I want to go? What do I want to learn from the situation? What's the best case scenario? What's my next move? Tough decisions aren't always easy. And for those of you who had a chance to evaluate that, thank good you did, thank goodness you did. For those of you that still haven't, and the sad part about this right now is you got to make a tough decision based on your job or your career, because we're getting messages right now. People are getting laid off for the second, third time. You know, the whole thing about this whole pandemic, this crisis, is that, that things were starting to get somewhat better. Thing, things were about to reopen. Business started to reopen. I remember here the restaurant starting to feed people outside on the patio. I mean, you know, the, the whole thing that uh, this whole pandemic thing would go die down when it's hot weather. Not so true, is it? But I remember these restaurants are opening up. Next thing you know, this whole George Floyd incident and all these other incidents came to light. And they you know, riots and protests and looting started happening. And the economy had to shut back down again because of this type of stuff. I felt so bad for businesses. They had to lay people off again or say, you know what, let's, let's, let's cool down for another week. Come back after a week later. I mean, the National Guard in some places were called out. We had to fight through all this type of stuff. You see, see what I'm talking about? So these things here in terms of understanding what you just went through, tough decisions are never easy. Third thing. Essential versus non-essential workers. Boy, is this crazy. Um, let, me, let me share with you some data here. Let me share with you some data here. Uh, case in the United States, right? 2.9 million cases of coronavirus in the United States, 50,000 new cases. I think it was a high of the amount of new cases found and discovered in a day, okay? Deaths due to coronavirus, 131,000 deaths based on coronavirus from 2.9 uh, people getting it. I, I, and I'm sure you, are familiar with people that got the coronavirus through the pandemic and survived. It was some of the hardest uh, a couple of days, three days, four days, very tough for them based on their age, based on some potential underlying uh, pre-existing health conditions. But you probably have heard of many different stories of people that got, that got the coronavirus, got the COVID-19, fought it, survived it, and are fine right now. Now they're COVID negative. You know, we're coming up with an interview here. We interviewed two-time Super Bowl champion Ray Crockett, cornerback that played in the Super Bowl team with the Denver Broncos. The day of us shooting that interview, he was COVID-19 negative after 14 days of fighting and battling through it. And the crazy part about his attitude through it is like, man, listen, the only thing they gave him in terms of medicine was a Z-Pack. And so you and I are very familiar with people who are essential and non-essential based, based on work. Here's an example. TSA checkpoint. This is, uh, this is how many people flew this time last year, one year ago. 2.5 million people flew. 2.5 million flew 7-7-2020. This year, 641,000. Let's go July 4th weekend, July, uh, July 3rd and July 4th. 2.1 million people, 2.3 million people flew through airports, through TSA checkpoints. This year, 
718,466, respectively. Let's look at what happened in the, begin the beginning of the, the pandemic crisis. L look how many people were, uh, were flying 414, a day before tax day, 414 in 2020. A year ago, 2.2 million people were flying through TSA, through airports, through the TSA checkpoint. 414 in 2020, 87,000 people flew that same day. So what does this mean? It's deeming essential and non-essential jobs, workers, not necessarily by what you think is essential, but based on what the government is deeming is essential, non-essential. And the hard part of back to number two, tough decisions are never easy. A lot of people are being laid up. I think United Airlines just released the fact that they're laying off practically half their workers. So take a look at this. Just two hours ago at the shooting of this video, United Airlines warns of 36,000 layoffs. Why? Because people aren't flying. People are getting crushed in this industry. And think about this. You, you have a, you have a five-year car loan. You got a credit card. You got obviously kids that need to eat. You have a 20, 15, 20, 30 year mortgage on your house. And you're being told that you're being laid off. By the way, and consider these industries that are being hit the hardest by coronavirus based on them being deemed essential, non-essential. Obviously you saw uh, airlines being hit. What do you think affects airlines? Travel, hotels, restaurants, bars, gambling, casinos, obviously airlines, hotels, movie theaters. Nobody's going to the movie theater right now. Everything's shut down. The worst part about it, no production company shooting new movies. So if you thought you liked Netflix, you thought you liked Amazon, all these new movies that's coming out, you have a chance to see. There ain't no movies coming up. By the way, side note, one of the shows I love to watch on Showtime is called Billions. I think they're stuck on episode seven, six or seven. There's no episode eight yet. You know why? Because by the time they're shooting episode eight, they had to shut down based on coronavirus. So no new movies are coming out here in the next six to 12 months. You're looking at a bunch of reruns and a bunch of retreads. Sports. The sports industry is about to be greatly affected by the COVID uh, uh, pandemic. And it's crazy because Patrick Mahomes just signed a half a billion dollar 10-year contract with the Kansas City Chiefs. In my mind, so, so I'm looking at that data, by the way, and if sports are being affected, but yet the Kansas City Chiefs can sign a 10-year, $500 million contract, okay, well, I'm looking at that too as well. So I'm seeing this data, I'm seeing that fact because I don't care necessarily what people report, I care more about what people do because they might have access to information that we don't really have publicly. But you don't sign a player for 10 years to half, half a million dollars if you don't have an insightful and optimistic future what's going on in the sports world, in this case, the NFL. Cruises. I mean, does anybody trust in cruise liners right now? I mean, are you guys watching this video? Are you guys fired up about going on a cruise? I'm sure you're excited one day to go on a cruise or go back to a cruise one day again, but with the risk? I mean, these are things to think about. Shipping, right? Film production. We were just talking about that. The, writing this article, Oscar winning actor Tom Hanks announced that he tested positive for the coronavirus. Automakers, you know why? People are like, you know what? I'm barely driving now. Why do you need a car or cars? Uber. Or just work from home. Oil and gas, same, same reason. Retail. I mean, retail is getting crushed. The malls are, not only the, was retail being affected by Amazon, but now retail is being affected by, boom, the pandemic. I mean, uh, I went to the mall the other day and she said, because we need to buy some bags. We're, we're, we're making a, a trip. We went to the mall and only 10 people allowed in the store at any given time. It kind of crushes the shopping experience for a typical person, especially for these high-end luxury stores. Tech, conventions. Listen, if you're in a business, are you dependent on, on people to buy a ticket to come to your convention? Uh, that's going to be greatly affected too as well. And the people that run the conventions, the, the concessions, the cleaning crew, the setup crew, a lot of jobs out there at risk. Essential, non-essential. Another thing, you know, I've seen a stock, Peloton stock. What's Peloton? It's that bike. You know, people, you know, working out on the bike at home with a the, with the screen. You're competing with everybody that's on the internet and on the web because you can compete with people virtually. Look at that Peloton stock. People buying more exercise bikes with a virtual experience. Speaking of vir virtual experience, look at this. Look at this uh, technology called Mirror. One mirror every workout. What is this doing to gyms? What is it doing to fitness centers? It's gonna obliterate this industry. The trainers, the staff, again, the cleaning crew, the, the check-in folks, personal trainers, all that stuff is being affected, essential, non-essential. So back to my early point, right now, this moment, very tough decisions are gonna be put on your lap. And I'm gonna get to a point here in a second, but you gotta figure out if the career that you're in right now if you've been deemed a non-essential worker and you just put five years into that career, 10 years into it, 15 years into it, this thing ain't letting up for a while. In the meantime, guess what you gotta pay? Your bills, your lifestyle, 
food, your financial commitments, and you can't work, it's crazy. I know. The country hasn't experienced anything like this since 1918. So the better question, back to my point number one, how are you going to adapt? And many people today are considering a career or a business that is essential that they never thought about doing ever before. So this is a point in your life, I'm not, you know, I, I have to get past my ego or get past, you know what, I thought I'd never do this before. Listen, I come out the Marine Corps and my solve for it, what I was solving for is like, how do I put food on a table and roof over heads? I was a single dad with, with, with my kids. How do I do that? I don't care what I was doing. As long as it was honorable, it wasn't breaking the law, and I'd have to worry about looking over my shoulder. I wanted to do it. I found myself at the Jiffy Loop. I found myself at the uh, YMCA a lifeguard from 8 o'clock in the morning. I found myself as an Olive Garden, and I found myself entering the insurance business 21 years ago. 21 years later, here I still am inside the insurance industry. Got rid of all those other three jobs, but here I am in an industry that's been deemed essential. And I'll get back to, I'll get back to there in a second. My next lesson I learned about this is wartime leadership. You know, there, there's a time where you're a peacetime leader and a wartime leader. Here's what I realize, realized. Wartime leaders in this era, they, even though they were separated, but they still find a way to unify and still get together. We, we had a conversation in our office when we decided to shut things down at our office because we have a 12,000 square foot office here where people are literally here. We have two, 300 people here inside our office at any given moment uh, throughout the week. I said, guys, I know, I know you guys like to get together, training, our community, our work environment, etc. But guys, I got two responsibilities. I got a leadership responsibility. And number two, I have a social responsibility. And, and I think a lot of the CEOs, a lot of leaders out there are thinking that way too as well. We have a leadership responsibility to, to, to run our company. But at the same time, we have a social responsibility not to put you at harm. And so we made the tough decision to say, you know what? We got to find a different way to do this. The, to build a virtual community, do this online, to still get our business done, but online. So we were separated, but we still find a way to unify. The second part of that about being a wartime leader is being able to set an example of strength. I know during tough times and during scary times, un, uncharted territory, a wartime leader shows strength, courage. They're just as afraid of everybody else that left and to the right of them, but they're strong in their decision. They're saying, you know, what can I control? Control what you can control, Right? All these other things that you have anxiety about that you can't control, right? You got to cut those and put that to the side or find someone else to take care of that. You can't control that right now, but you can control this. Figure out what this is. That's wartime leadership. I can control this. You know, there's a military quarter there that says, concentrate your greatest strength on the most decisive point. To not spread it around to try to be balanced. Focus in. Get in a wedge. Pierce. And what wartime leaders do, they know how to do that. Whether that's with your family, whether it's with your money, whether it's with your career, your business, concentrate your greatest strength on the most decisive point. That's what wartime leaders do. And based on the opportunity through Zoom is not only were you able to communicate, but you had to communicate up, increase your communication. I mean, we had, we had guys uh, during the coronavirus, you know, there was, you know, in any relationship, there's no such thing as over communication at this point. Through weird, unweary times, there wasn't a bad thing to over-communicate. I mean, we, we started with our firm. I said, guys, listen, there's a lot of new people come on board to our firm each and every week, each and every month. I wanted to open up access to me. Get to know our firm through me. Humanize the opportunity. Humanize what we do in, in, uh, as a sales force inside the insurance industry. So I open up a Zoom coffee every 9 o'clock, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, just so I could get to the new people. And the new people were labeled them as the, the pandemic babies because they're being birthed in a new career and starting a new business during a pandemic and they're birthing themselves a new opportunity. And so wartime leaders communicate up frequently and they're more detailed with the communication. I started breaking down more data. I thought I, I, thought I was, my, my wife and I was, you know, we, we were thinking about uh, where we grew from one year to the next. I'll show you some numbers here in a second, how we broke that down. But how did this really pan out for us? Because a lot of companies were contracting versus Obviously, our company was expanding, but wartime leaders know how to either maintain or expand an opportunity to find a weakness and then at the same time find a strength. That's what wartime leaders do. And then, and then last but not least, cash flow and cash boom is still king. Proven once again. I'm looking at cash. What else was valuable? Cash. What else was valuable? Gold. Guns. Where's, where's all my gun rights activists right now, right? Everybody out there cleaning out the gun racks. People buying ammunition rounds. You see all these uh, things happening, not only through the coronavirus, but through the protests. We interviewed Shooter Rugi, who protected even further chaos happening in Seattle, Washington, 
by him understanding and properly knowing how to use gun and, and obviously use of force. So that was valuable. Another thing that was valuable, toilet paper, another thing that was valuable, Lysol, disinfectant. So many things that you wouldn't think were valuable became valuable. The most valuable thing though was cash and cash flow. Having money still coming in regardless of what's going on in the marketplace. Listen, throughout the whole pandemic, we didn't lay off one person. We didn't let, matter of fact, we, we went the other way. We expanded. Let, 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 me, let me show you some numbers. You know, uh, uh, unemployment right now is over 47 million. 47 million people apply for unemployment. In our industry, inside the insurance industry, our CEO was asking, Patrick Adair was asking his, his board, his investors, what's an acceptable loss in the insurance industry? 20, 30%. 20, 30%. Matter of fact, the insurance industry, our trade pub, here, Insurance News Net Magazine says insurers are concerned, insurers are concerned about distribution and profitability. Concerned about distribution and profitability due to social distancing. Why? Because typically inside our industry, the insurance industry, insurance is sold face to face in an office, in a home, face to face. But based on social distancing, the insurance companies are worried does the sales agent, does the licensed life insurance agents, can they actually get to the potential clients? Can they get to the customers? So they're worried about distribution profitability and asking around, no particular firm, no particular person, but hey, if you were to be investing inside the insurance industry, what's an acceptable loss? If you're an investor in a firm, acceptable loss is 20, 30%. Negative 20, 30% the other way, loss. So the ability to adapt, the ability to grow, the ability to be a wartime leader, how do we fare? How do we fare? Let me show you. From March 1st of last year, 2019, to July 8th, which is the, uh, the date of the recording of this video, our licensed agents submitted 5,474 applications last year, 2019. Our licensed sales force, okay, our license of, of, of independent life insurance agents, our total commission we paid during this time frame last year was 2.8 million, okay? So this was our numbers from last year during the same time frame as we are facing right now during the pandemic. Good times here, right? Good times. Nothing was going around. There was no pandemic last year. Nobody's scared. Nobody's running around. Nobody's shut down. Nobody's deemed essential, non-essential. This was last year, 2019, March 1st to July 8th. Clients, our licensed agents, submitted client apps, commissions we paid to our licensed sales force, $2.8 million over this, life, uh, over this time frame. Fast forward to this year, lockdown, shutdown, stay at home order, quarantine. Our guys learned to adapt virtually. Check this out. Client applications, instead of having a 20 to 30% loss, our guys submitted 7,505 apps. Boom which is an increase from last year at 37%. So stay at home, no office, virtual, Zoom, essential, non-essential, our essential guys was able to help more clients. A lot more people were thinking about life insurance. A lot more people were worried about protecting their retirement savings. Therefore, our licensed agents submitted client applications of 7,505 during this pandemic so far. Total commissions paid during the same time frame as last, 4.3 million. 4.3 million. In other words, that's an increase of 53% from one year to the last. Why? Because our guys realized essential versus not essential. Our guys realized that cash flow and cash is king. And none of our guys were dependent on stimulus checks or unemployment. It's funny, uh, Alex, who's actually recording this, he said, Matt, listen, man, I know you haven't laid me off, man, but bro, my friend, you, you're asking me about your friend, right? The guest unemployment check. Bro, my friend, what do you, what do you make, 5,600 bucks? Yeah, 56 every two weeks. Dude, I'm making 50, 50, well, 50 every, every month. Every month, yeah. I'm making 5,600 bucks every two months. I got COVID check and got my unemployment. No problem. Short-term solution. For right now, he's winning off our backs. But you know what, friends? Don't be like him. You know why? Because that's a short-term solution. Matter of fact, he needs to be reinvesting that back into finding something so therefore he's no longer dependent upon government unemployment checks. That's what you should be doing. Just want to let you know, that's your social responsibility. Your social responsibility and personal responsibility by accepting money from the government to help you out is to make sure you say, thank you, government, for helping me out, so therefore you're no longer dependent upon the government and you actually do something to pay it forward, that you help your, out, your fellow citizen out, so therefore they're no longer dependent upon the government. I don't like being dependent upon the government. I like, hey, government, stay out my way. Personally for me, government, stay out my way. Let me operate and do my business. Let me make my money. Here's my taxes, but stay out my way. Provide schools, provide hospitals, provide roads, provide those things, but stay out my way. Here's my taxes. You are steward of that money now, but stay out my way. Let me make my money. Let me pay my taxes. And just to, just to let you know, we haven't asked for any government loans. And then next thing you know, you got all these companies filing for the PPP loan. Harvard, 
Where'd you guys apply for that loan? Uh, sugar, uh, uh, Shake Shack. Why are you asking for money? Yet, yet my friends here who have businesses, small businesses, may, may not have name brands as you, they never got the PPP loan. These are things that we're thinking about. Your dependence on cash flow and cash has proven itself once to be, again, king. And uh, 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 investing and, and putting your money away in things are cash or cash coins, gold, silver, having these things. Because right now, opportunities are coming up. Opportunities are coming up. What am I talking about? About six to 12 months now, if this, if this keeps up, these layoffs keep happening up. These are lessons learned going forward. And I learned this from the 08 recession, great recession. 08, 09. I also learned this from the dot-com bubble. During these moments, opportunities are opening itself up for you. It's going to favor those that have cash and mastered their cash flow. Why? All these luxury items, cars, watches, jewelry, you can be able to pick them up here at maybe 40, 50 cents on a dollar. Why? Because people are going to start unloading their stuff. By the way, same thing too with real estate. Residential property, commercial real estate, people are going to start unloading this type of stuff. Watch, watch what happens six months after the shooting of this video. A year after shooting this video. Why? Because it's a pattern. I'm not making this stuff, I'm just, I'm just saying what I saw. By the way, I'm not an economist, but I, I saw what happened in 01. I saw what happened in 08, 09. Studying these type of trends. We're in a trend right now. And the trend is, for those of you that mastered cash flow and storing and taking up cash, to ready to get into opportunities, to acquire things at 30, 40, 50, 60 cents on the dollar, acquire things generally at a discount versus a premium is gonna happen here pretty soon for you. But you gotta have money. You don't wanna miss out on it. Why? The future seeds of the future multi-millionaires, deca-millionaires, billionaires are being sprinkled right this very moment. And that could be you. But you gotta master, be, be able to master your money, master your cash and cash flow. And so, some of you guys are thinking right now, well, what else, Matt? What else? What else did you learn? Here's, here's what I learned. Last but not least, standards. Standards. Three types of people going through this recession right now. Three different types of people going through this pandemic right now. Number one, people that are prepared. They prepared long ago. For example, Dean Mason, uh, a D, he's a DJ, one of the top 50 DJs in the world. He made a decision two years ago, being at 40 some years old. Listen, man, he says publicly, I'm not so sure if I'm a 40 year old DJ that should be in clubs anymore. I'm sorry, people that's on, that's on drugs. I'm sorry, people that's on alcohol. It's cool to be a DJ, it could be a club, have a good time, but man, I'm surrounded by this environment all the time, and me and my girl Fernanda, you know, I'm, I'm trying to build a life with her, I'm not so sure that this is the life I want to live with when I'm 50 or 60. So he decided to pivot long before he had to pivot. And last month, he earned $45,000 last month in June. His, old, his, his, his younger brother, John Mason, he earned $145,000 in June of 2020. Why? because they decided to pivot and move. So the first type of person who's going through this, this, this crisis right now, this pandemic, this pandemic recession, are people that adapted and grew and made a move before they needed to, they anticipated. All, wealth is about, wealth creation is all about anticipation, which is what I'm encouraging you to consider, anticipating what's gonna happen to you next 30, 60 days, 60, 30, 60 days, 90 days, six months, 12 months. But they anticipated. And guess what, all his buddies, all his DJ buddies, what are you doing, Dean? What are you doing, man? Get back on the cruise ship and play them some songs on, 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 on your laptop. They're giving him a hard time. And all his buddies right now, laid off, don't have a job, don't have a gig. They're not playing in restaurants. They're not playing in clubs. They're not playing in any lounges. Looking for work. Yet Dean, last month, made $45,000 in one month. Because he decided to pivot, he decided to adjust. That's the first person. Second type of person, standards are getting lower. Oh, I'm just depending on government. I'm depending on government check, unemployment, this and this and that. I'm, I'm milking the government for what it can give me. And then when the marketplace starts to open up for opportunities, uh, they don't know how to take advantage because why? Just like a muscle, the mind, the heart, the spirit isn't working again. Why? Because it was so, got laser. It was, it was so dependent on other people, depending on friends and family and charity and government to pay the bills to make their way. And how do you feel about that? I mean, where, where's your self-confidence, self-esteem and self-worth in that process? And the third type of person is going through this pandemic recession, through, through these tough times, other people say, you know what? I got a little bit of money. I got my wit about me. I know what I'm about. I ain't going down like this, man. I need to adapt. I need to pivot. I need to adjust. And if you're watching this video up until this point, I hope that's you. If that's you, drop it in the comment section below. I'd love to encourage you. I'd love to say, you're mad. High five virtually. Keep at it. It doesn't have to be with us. Whatever it is that you're doing, do it. Nobody's supporting you, I know, I, I know right now. Nobody's patting you on the back, I know right now. Nobody's saying, man, you're making the right move. Here's what I realize. All truth passes through three stages. All truth passes through three stages. 
Number one, the first time you decide to make a move, everybody's going to laugh at you. <laughs> right? They're making jokes about you. They're making memes about you. Second, fo- second part about that, all truth. Pass through the second stage. You're violently opposed. You're unfriended. People uh, uh, give you a hard time on social media. People backstab you. People send you negative texts. People out of nowhere send you messages that you haven't heard from from a long time ago. I heard that this, da 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 Second type of person. Right, the second type of situation. Second stage. You're violently opposed. Then you reach the third stage, which is now you're accepted as self-evident. Accepted as truth. Man, you know, you're always right. I knew you could do it. You always had it in you. Mm-hmm. Where were you at when you were laughing at me and violently opposing me? You weren't there. Now you want to say I was right. Well, at least you can admit it. Well, anyway, that's going to be your truth if you choose to go through those, st- those stages. Lots of people get wigged out about it because they don't want to... Uh, offend anybody around them. But listen, anytime you decide to not lower your standards, but anytime you decide to raise your standards, guess what you become? You become offensive. The moment you decide not to settle, you become offensive to people. You become very annoying to a lot of people. Well, guess what? Join the annoying crew because most people who are annoying because they're raising their standards, they, uh, they end up eating the best fruits of the labor and they're discovering the next best version of themselves. You need to trust that process. Get after it. Document this moment. Document these times. It's not easy right now, I know. But these are the lessons I'm learning and observing for the people we're coaching and mentoring. We haven't laid off anybody. We're not contracting, we're expanding. And these are the things I'm hearing from all the people that's coming to us right now because of this crisis. With that being said, guys, I'd love to know your thoughts. I'd love to know your feedback. I'd love to know some follow-up questions you might have. Drop it in the comments section below. If you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page. If you're watching this video on YouTube, Make sure you click subscribe, hit notifications to be alerted next time we upload our next episode. Appreciate you tuning in to this episode of the 7 Fair Squad with your money smart guy and the five lessons I learned so far for the first six months that shook the world and has continued to shake the world throughout the rest of 2020. With that being said, guys, I appreciate you tuning out to the YouTube channel where people are thinking like a millionaire, they're strategizing like a millionaire, and obviously looking to become one day, pretty soon, a cash flow millionaire, first generation millionaire at that. Well, if you haven't checked out this video here, make sure you watch it, which is how to use a lockdown to strategize and plan for your next move. This is your next opportunity. Make sure you watch this video. With that being said, guys, thanks for tuning in. I'm your money smart guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. <laughs>